Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about comparing two quantitative variables. Let's start here. This graph um, talks about natural gas that is used in some households um, to eat, heat the home, heat the water, and cook. A utility company sent the following bar charts to a household to show the amount of gas, uh, natural gas measured in therms, which is just like a unit of measure, like inches or something like that. Anyways, so it's in therms um, that the household used last year. The chart shows the number of therms and the average monthly temperature in degrees in Fahrenheit for each month. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to describe how the number of therms used each month changed over the year. Okay, so let's just look at this graph for a second. It's here, it goes down, it goes back up. All right, so the number of therms used decreased each month from January to July. So I see a negative trend. Um, and then from July to December, it increased each month in general. The lower average monthly temperature, the more therms were used. Like we noticed that here in the January, December time, it's average in the 50s, and we used a bunch of therms. Here when it's average in the 70s, I don't know where this was taken. I'd love to have this weather. It stays between 50 and 76 each year. Man, that's beautiful. Anyways, less therms used. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to construct a graph that shows the relationship between the number of therms used and the average monthly temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and put average monthly temperature as my x-axis. You could use therms as your x-axis, um, but I feel like I control the amount of AC I use more than I control the weather outside, as I am not Zeus, um, or whatever deity you choose to control the weather. So it looks like my temperature lowest is 54, so I'll start, and I'll just count by fives. So 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. I guess my x-axis is a little bit too long because it looks like 77 is the highest I get, so 80. Okay. Um, and then my therms are anywhere between 6 and 55. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I have space for going by tens. All right, and then I'm just gonna start graphing all of these points onto this graph. So 56 degrees goes with 52 therms. So 56 is right here up to 52 therms. Uh, 57 uh, 40 therms, so it's going to be a little bit farther over, and there's 40. Um, 58 degrees, 33. 58 is probably around here, there's 33. Um, 63, 26. 63 would be here, 26 would be about here. Um, 66, 19. That's uh, somewhere in there. Um, 72, 16, 72, 16, uh, 76, 6, somewhere there, uh, 77, 10, like about there, 75, 18, about there, 68, 19, out there, uh, 60, 34, out there, and 54, 55, 54, 55. Okay, so looking at this, there seems to be a strong negative and somewhat curved relationship between therms used and average monthly temperature. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is we want to describe what the graph uh, that we just made 
reveals about the relationship between the number of therms used and the average monthly temperature that is not revealed in the bar chart sent to you by your utility company. Okay, so what do we get from this that we don't see here? Well, oh, what I just said, that strong, negative, somewhat curved relationship between therms used and average monthly temperature. We hypothesized that when we were just talking about what we saw on the graph, but now we really see that happening. We might even be able to make some kind of prediction as to um, what the average monthly temperature might need to be for us to use zero therms or what the average monthly temperature would need to be for us to use 100 therms, things like that. Now, before we get too far into uh, working another example, I'll save that. I want to talk about correlation real quick. So there is positive correlation and negative correlation. Oops. Let's pretend like I didn't make these two dots and these three dots. Okay, now we see these first few correlations. Those are pretty strong. And as we keep going this way, even though we still have upwards and downward trends, they start to be weaker. Now, eventually you'll get to the point where it's hard to tell should the line be going up, down, or sideways, and that's when we say that there's no correlation. the next example. Okay, well I'd rather the uh, axes be in the picture. So the graph below shows the monthly average temperatures uh, in Fahrenheit for two cities, Madison, Wisconsin and Juneau, Alaska. So both very cold places. Um, now, based on the graph, compare the two cities with respect to monthly average temperature over the year, address both similarities and differences in overall patterns. All right, so let's talk about similarities first. Both cities have the same pattern, uh, the average monthly temperatures throughout the year. More specifically, both cities are colder in the winter months, January and December, um, and beginning the beginning and end of the year, and warmer in the summer months during the middle part of the year. The difference is Madison is warmer during more months of the year than Juneau, and Madison's average temperatures vary more than Juneau's. For example, at the beginning of the year, Madison's temperatures are lower than Juneau's, um, but from April to November, Madison's are higher than Juneau's. Now, what does this tell us if Madison's got more fluctuation? Well, it says, um, for which of the two cities is the standard deviation of the 12-month average temperature greater? Okay, let's think about that. Standard deviation is how spread out something is. Which one's more spread out? Madison has both a bigger maximum and a smaller minimum. So Madison has a greater standard deviation. Uh, the average monthly temperature um, deviates more from its mean than Juno's temperature has the chance to deviate. Um, so those are things that we should be looking at when we're looking at uh, quantitative variables represented in graphs.